Hi, I'm Zuni Chopra. Okay, she's just imitating me. I'm Anupama Chopra. <laughs> this is what I do on camera. Uh, if you like the video you're going to see, please subscribe to Books on Toast and... And all the books we've discussed are in the description, the links to them. I'm, I still need practice with this. <laughs>
That's okay. pretty cool. I don't like it when she reads book like, books like that though. Because Why? I'm, I'm eating unhealthy and she's like, you know, there are microbes that are going to be mad at me for that. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let me enjoy my Nutella. I'm having a moment. <laughs> like, <laughs> listen, you eat unhealthy. Okay. Thank you, you eat unhealthy for the next 10 years because Thank after you. that, it's just down here. Yeah. <laughs> just wait till your body hit th- 30. Right? Late that, 20s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <Sorry>. Anoya. <laughs> <laughs> Ruining childhood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to ask you, Anupama, um, how did you start reading? Like, how was was reading a part of your childhood? Like, how integral was it to you? It was. You, you know, um, uh, I grew up um, in a middle class home. But the one thing that my parents uh, said that they would always spend mm-hmm. on was, was books. So they said, we'll give you a great education and we'll give you a house full of books. And literally, that's how I grew up. And my earliest memories of my brother, Vikram, are... Uh, he would just be sitting with like these, I think he went through like a book a day. He was just nuts. I, I, I mean, I, I, you know, so he'd be sitting like this. He'd, you know, he'd be chewing on a collar, whatever shirt he had. And he'd be like, that's, that's, what the, I'm telling you, that, that's my only, that's, hilarious. that's like, so my, one of my enduring sort of core memories from childhood is that. Um, and you know, he was the oldest brother. So, so me and Tanuja just kind of followed suit. Though, um, I can't claim I was ever as big a reader. As he still is. Mm. What did you read? What kind of books? Uh, you know, I was a big fan of Enid Blyton, so I read all the the Malritas, and and yeah, then I I got her to read because they're just so much fun. They're so really much fun. fun. I was really heartbroken when I realized it wasn't real. Because <laughs> first of I read course. about Hogwarts, and then yeah. I found out that was real. And I was like, okay, fine, maybe I should have guessed that given the flying in the wands. But Malry Towers seemed so real. And then I was like, mom, I want to go here. And she was like, it's not a real school. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you go to some other school yeah. in Juhu. <laughs> correct, correct. Um, so it was a lot of Enid Blyton, you know, the famous fives, which I couldn't get her on. Mm. Uh, she, didn't, she didn't like those. There was a secret seven. Uh, all those, those books were just, I, I loved, I loved those and, and I know it's politically completely incorrect now, but you yeah. know, Phantom and Mandrake, yeah. those were big ones, of you course. know, Phantom especially, which is just all sorts of sort of political incorrectness there now, but at that time, who knew, right? Did you guys mm-hmm. share books a lot? Like you, yeah, three Harry things? Potter, yes. didn't you have someone waiting in the line for Harry yeah, Potter? Yeah, this is not huh? something I'm proud of, <laughs> um, but Tell I, us. I, um, uh, so our oldest daughter, Isha, uh, was about 9 or 10 and and um, I tried to get her to start reading Harry Potter and this is when the books were being published like with Correct. a 3 year gap, yeah, right? Yeah, they weren't yeah. all out. Uh, so I can't remember which book it was but I was pregnant with Zuni and that book was coming out and I just said, I need it, I need it and it wouldn't, it wouldn't release at the same time in India, right? And Vinod's uh, sound guy was in London. And, you know, I was pregnant. Who, how is he going to argue with the boss's <laughs> wife, who's also like seven months pregnant and just having this complete moment of like hyper-pregnancy and saying, I need Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> and so that poor man stood in line for hours to buy me that book. I'm, oh, oh my, my God. <laughs> it's the only time I've played producer's wife, I promise you. <laughs> Harry Potter. It's okay. All sins are forgiven. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And then, of course, I got her hooked, and she's a big Potter head. I'm in Slytherin, by the way, if anyone wants to. Oh, Oh, so is she. So am I. Yeah. But mom ruined uh, Dumbledore's death for me. I was like, (gasps) why? You spoiled it. Yes, she spoiled it. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) She was like, what book you want? Has Dumbledore died yet? And I was like, no. (laughs) Died yet? I like that. Because I wept, I wept when he died. Of course. Yeah, I, mean, I did just because I was like, oh, it happened. All right, cool. Moving on. So <laughs> I was unaffected Why by Why are you completely. in Slytherin? Now I'm curious. Well, unpopular I'm, choice, but I'm, I like well, it. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> well, not, it's because of the whole, I'm, the thing of ambition, the thing of yeah. fierce loyalty, the thing of kind of fi- determination and fighting to reach your goals, and also because it's really cool. It and is totally cool. And the Pottermore quiz gave it to me, so I of feel like it's official. Oh, of I course. actually, whatever quiz I take, I always get a mix of Ravenclaw and Slytherin. But since the Sorting Hat takes your choice into account, I've picked this. <laughs> I just love Severus Snape. I think the best character ever. I Most mean, he's a really right well-written there. character, but I feel like he really didn't need to be that mean to Neville. Or Harry. Well, no, Harry well, I mean, can still ha- take oh, it. Harry on. was sassy right back, yeah. so that's okay. At least with him, Sometimes. there was some level She's of got like all the arguments, you can't win this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let it go. <laughs> yeah. 
Zoni, why don't you tell us about the island of the day before the book just just came out? What inspired you? What it's about and stuff. So it's kind of it's a several poems and short stories, and okay. they're kind of tied together with the theme of the modern fairy tale. So it's it's just kind of the old fairy tales that everyone's kind of grown up listening to and loving, and what they would be if they were in today's world in many mm-hmm. different forms. I mean, it's not always literally, but e- each story is kind of inspired by that. Wow! Why did you pick up uh, fairy tales? I don't know. It's just I've always loved fantasy and fairy tales, and I think there's something really powerful and kind of unforgettable about these stories. I mean, there's a reason they've survived for so long. So that just kind of drew me about them, I think. And also, I did a summer course at Harvard, um, and the course was called "The Power and Politics of Fairy Tales." Wow, so wow. that was really interesting. And yeah, that definitely really inspired um, a lot of what is now in the book. That's amazing. You guys should pick it up. We'll put a link to the book in the description below. Yes. So, Support young writers. Yeah, please. Yeah, we we please. love them. We want more of them. We want to see more of their work. And I mean, she's written four books. We should all be ashamed of us. Yes, <laughs> she's written four. <laughs> We'll put the link in the description. <laughs> so speaking of Howard, actually, that's a really nice segue. Um, so one of the things that Incred does is that it provides uh, education loans for studies abroad. And I uh, read that you had done your MA in the middle, middle, yeah, middle, middle school, school of, yeah. uh, in Northwestern. So fun fact: I've done an MA from Syracuse. Oh, nice! Yeah, in journalism. Nice. Yeah, and then completely change careers, but that's a different story. Yeah, that's uh, what everyone tells me. Like everyone I met is like, we never use that degree. We like, never use. Yeah. I'm. D- that's not a lesson for yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I regret this, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> it looks really nice on my wall. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what was that like? Um, did it, it was amazing. Yeah, did it um, change? It changed me completely. No, and and so so as a counterpoint to her Syracuse degree, Zuni, um, uh, for me, like my foundation as a journalist uh, was created at Middle. Uh, the things they taught mm-hmm. us um, are just what has helped me in good stead. Like mm. th- I mean, basic stuff like fact checking and yes, thank uh, you, you know, which they just don't teach you here yeah, or even yeah, yeah. expect. Oh, from they you, which is shocking. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they failed us our first semester. If we got one wrong spelling, correct, correct. they just straight F. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that, I then I never pass that class. <laughs> no, no, but, but you learn. <laughs> you learn, and yeah. that's what you remember. That at least get those things right. Yeah. You know, uh, and and so for me, it was completely life altering. I can't recommend it enough to anybody who's interested. See, this is why it's fun though, because I have parents saying completely different things. Because my dad's like, I don't understand why you're stressed so much about math and physics. I think you should just travel the world and write. I'm like, all right, that's great. And then mom's like, it changed my life, and you must go and you must try to get into, you know, the ones that ones that are like deserving of you and all that stuff. So it's nice because I've got two parents telling me completely different things. So I know that if I achieve something great, I'd come home and they'd be really proud of me. But I also know if I came home and I was like, I'm feeling like dropping out today, they'd be like, perfect, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Both sides She's of got the this on camera now. <laughs> <laughs> so what what I would say about it is that it's an it's an unmissable experience. Apart from whatever it teaches you, you're going to spend the rest of your life traveling the world and reading and writing or even working for that. Oh, matter. I'm but going. College I'm, I'm, I'm is just sold. yeah, yeah. It's a once it in a lifetime experience. Yeah. So it's totally. I I had a great time, even though I was in minus thirty degrees of snow. I will. Uh, it was a little expensive. But <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't change it for anything. Same. Yeah. Same. Wow. Okay. Uh, Anupama, you spoke about Vikram and Tanuja, both who've been on our show. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been great. Nice. Vikram yeah. actually came with uh, Rohan Joshi to talk about the Sacred Games. We did an unlikely pairing with them, and Tanuja came and talked to us about business women. We had a great. So we had a so great, much great, fun. Yeah, <laughs> with both of them. Yeah, yeah. So what was growing up in a household like that? Like you know, what was your dinner conversation about? Were you guys always throwing ideas for stories and? You know. Before yeah. before that, uh, huh. do you have any distant cousins who like published? <laughs> yeah, is there anyone else Left. in the family? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, please, we want to get them all. That's yeah. Like, no, I you know honestly, I don't remember um, sort of sitting and having some deep intellectual conversations. Yeah. I, I I feel like it was just a very normal childhood, and and actually Vikram then. Uh, went to boarding school. He did go to a Malarita's equivalent. He went to Mayo College. No. Oh, of uh, course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, so he wasn't around for a while, and 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 then uh, we moved. Like we 
Hmm. The interesting thing was that we moved around a lot. My father worked with a multinational and okay. we, we, so he got transferred like literally every three years. So unlike Zuni, who's like been in the same school hmm. all her life, we had to readjust and make new friends and all of that, which I think makes you a sort of different person, uh, you know. But I don't remember like us sitting around and like having deep, intellectual conversations I don't think we No, did. not maybe just like talking about stories or things like that yeah because my yes. mother my mother is a big one I mean it yeah. all comes from her really yeah. you yeah. know she's the one who sort of got into writing for movies and, yes. and uh, you know uh, and kind of gave us the creative genes okay. so okay. Um, so she was a big one for stories you know mm -hmm. at that time um, there were very few options and she used to write plays for Vivid Bharti and oh wow. uh, yeah and do yeah. stuff for Doordarshan in New Delhi and, those you know, were gold like yeah. my dad still listens to them yeah exactly Hawa Mahal and all yes. that yes yes so she used to be in all that wow okay she wrote movies as well right she yeah. did she wrote, wrote Chandu Chan and Prem Rao. Yeah. those are the two yeah and then of course she wrote 1942 which is how I met Vinod mm. is she oh. in Bombay can we she yes yes her? she is <laughs> No, I mean, we'd love to actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She'd be happy too. Yeah, we should. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Zuni, yes, go on. No, I was just going to say that while she, you were talking about where Vikram Mama went to school, he also went to Pomona. And the other day they were in my school giving a college presentation because now because my applications are starting, a lot of colleges are coming this year. And they were naming their illustrious alumni and they named like three people and they were like, <laughs> they were like Vikram Chandra and I was like, that's my uncle. <laughs> and they were like, okay. <laughs> and this one, this one woman in the crowd was like, sacred games and the whole crowd goes, ooh. And I was like, yo, that's, yes. I'm like, I did nothing, but yes. <laughs> So Zuni, when I was researching you, I read that uh, your favorite author is Neil Gaiman. Yes. My favorite author is also Neil Gaiman. Yes. yes. High five. Oh, oh wait, that was terrible. All right, yes. there we go. <laughs> so, are you excited that he's coming to GLF yeah. this year? Are you going? Yeah. Great, we should hang out then. Because yeah. I'm also going. I'm <laughs> going so and I'm going to hang on to his legs. Yeah, literally. And be like, take me with you. you. Know, Anuya, he tweeted to her. <gasps> what? Yes. He replied That's me. That's amazing. Because, because I, okay, we were in the airport at like, I don't even know what time. We were going to Dubai and Riyadh, Dubai, we were going to the US because my cousin's sister has just had a baby. So, we were going to see her in uh, New York. And we're in the airport and it's really late and I'm just dealing with the ocean at the end of the lane, which is the book. I love oh, that book. Yeah. It's very scary though. It's terrifying. I know. But it was, I mean, it's a real game. What do you yeah, expect? Yeah. And my mom was like, hey, you know, this looks like a nice picture. Just keep reading and I'll take a picture of you. And I was like, all right. And I read with, you know, slightly better posture and, you know. <laughs> and then, so she took the picture and I... I posted it just, and I when when I said at Neil Gaiman, the only reason I added him is to be like, this is the author, mm. not because I was actually adding him. <laughs> and he replied, <laughs> and he was like, and he was like, Can I'm so him? I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Full stop. And I was like, you don't even understand <laughs> like, how. Like, you don't even, I was like, you don't even like. I can't even. I don't have. Oh like, what do you mean God. you're glad I'm enjoying? <laughs> so I can't like speak. <laughs> I was like, oh that, that, that's, I used to be a huge Samit Basu fan uh, and I went to the <laughs> launch of Sidhan Vadukut's Dork, the first one and Samit Basu was there just to support and um, I couldn't talk to him. I was, everybody, people were going and getting their books signed or whatever and they were talking to him and my my friend was with me, my best friend, he said, just go talk to him, just go talk to him and I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, so, I can't even imagine. Exactly, people are that way but film stars, yeah. I am like just, I was yeah. so excited I, at the word, word to screen um, market just to like run into, I took a photo with Apu Pen, I, like I, who, whoever told me, like whoever told me they were authors, I was just like, I'm so excited to meet you. So, I know how I feel. <laughs> Yeah, I can't even. Like, and he seems so like on from all from all his interviews and all his posts. I mean, he seems so calm. So I know that if I ever do actually meet, he's gonna be like, "Nice to meet you." I'm gonna be like, "I'm Sam, how are you?" You know, I'm sure he gets that <laughs> all the yeah, time. Gets that all the time. Yeah. So like my uh, brother in like I'm a huge Salman Rushdie fan. I just cannot get over how brilliant he is. So my sister-in-law, all she did is got him to say Sharon so that he could get the name right to write on the book. And she sent me that audio message. I just like kept looping again like some deranged girlfriend. <laughs> just like, what? Sharon? Again? So many times? He just said my name? Oh, <laughs> That's, it's just one of those random things. Yeah. But Zoni, do you have like ambitions of going abroad and studying? Are you like working on... Yeah, I am. I wanna, I'm gonna apply to the US for their liberal arts and their writing programs. Amazing. And That's hopefully cool. I get in. I mean, are there any schools that are top of mind for you? 
Definitely. I think brown is a big one. Okay. I would love to go there if I can. But then again, this is all if I can. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, just... Um, Yeah, but it's it's it can get pretty nerve wracking honestly at this point because this is right now when everyone's applying like all the applications mm-hmm. go by October and then yeah. the you know the la- the regular go by December and like this is the moment when it's getting like almost competitive in like an unhealthy way like it's getting that's why I'm honestly glad I have writing because I feel like if you if you, if all you have is grades then it's just gonna be a yeah, yeah but you'll always be assessing oh I got this but he got that and there's nothing else then that's all grades are all there is and that's just seems like a sucky way to like live like yeah. but at least the thing I have going for me is I'll probably be the only person applying for writing from my I from my entire school probably really? oh really well I was I'm applying one of the places that I'm applying to is the University of Iowa because they have an incredible writing program And um, we have an application at our school where you can enter the colleges that you're applying for. And it gives you the average IB score of people from our school that have gotten in in the past. Mm-hmm. So you have a sense of how where you should be aiming to get into that college. And there was just a line for the University of Iowa. So I went to the accounts department and I was like, I think there might be an error with my accounts. Just come in this line. They were like, no, that's because no one has ever applied there for me. <laughs> But you have a nice time there, sweetie, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Does Gaiman inspire what you write? Because yeah, for you know, sure. Because see, like other than him, like all the other fantasy writers, like I, when people think of fantasy, they think of these Y cliches, which is like mm. this girl with magic powers and mm. there's two cute boys and how will she choose and save the world at the same time. <laughs> But like he's kind of taken it in a completely different tangent, and he's like, yeah, fantasy can be dark and horrific, and she walks through a door and there's a woman with buttons <laughs> the other end who eats souls. It's like okay then. That's fun. <laughs> That's, yeah. That sounds, sounds delightful. Good. Thank that's you. Exactly. Yeah, what yeah. So that's why because he kind of showed me that fantasy can be whatever you make it rather than just these Y cliches. So that I'm oh. so I yes definitely he's amazing. Have you guys ever thought about doing like a mother daughter collaboration writing? You know I only write about Bollywood. <laughs> and, and Zuni's not a fan. <laughs> not as not as much as you have to be to start film companion. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, not that much. That's for hilarious. Sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, no. And I feel like I'm. We read very different books. We do. Also, like we I do. wouldn't. I would. I mean, unless of course I. I guess I'll see once I'm as old as you, mom. But I would never read something called the mind gut connection. <laughs> I call ageism there. Yeah. <laughs> So Zoni, you've spoken a lot about the books that you like to read. And Upama, what kind of books do you like to read? You know, I'm now at a point where I just like non-fiction. Oh, yeah? I don't know why. Okay. Uh, I don't know. That's a good well, thing. I, you know, so I used to be a big reader and then I had two kids. And um, like I literally became illiterate. Uh, because <laughs> because um, I had... Waste the time. Waste the time. Yeah. And zero attention span. So like literally for years, the mm. only thing I read... Well, Vanity Fair articles. <laughs> you know, it was like 7,000 words. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's so embarrassing. And now, like, mm-hmm. I literally, this year, I said, I have to go back to reading more. I mean, what's mm-hmm. the excuse? She's 17, you know. Yeah. Like, and they're not exactly <laughs> small anymore. Um, but but I find, like, the things that 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 call to me are, are sort of non-fiction books mm-hmm. and a lot about the movies. Mm, so okay. I just read an amazing biography of Pauline Kael, a film critic, mm-hmm. um, called A Life in the Dark. Okay. You know, so just a wonderful sort of um, portrait of a time ah. when when people like her sort of set the discourse for cinema in America. Right. Because she was so massive and she was so important and because she championed Bonnie and Clyde, yes. that film went yes. on to become, you know, so it's just, she's such a hero for me. Uh, that, uh, that So I love Uh, I love books like that and I read uh, Tina Brown's The Vanity Fair Diaries because I'm like so mm. fascinated with that whole world <laughs> uh, uh, and it was just, you know, great fun. Uh, Twinkle made me read The Vegetarian, mm. which oh, I thought, of course. yeah, I did. I thought yeah. it was fantastic. I mean, uh, uh, just their, their, their pages of description in that book that I can't get out of my head. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah it's you know, visual. It's, it's yeah. really just vivid and, and it would just be an amazing film, but very kind of disturbing mm. uh, but honestly other than that I haven't read fiction in a long time I'm just doing a lot of non-fiction I just got another book uh, Josh Larson who's also a film critic uh, movies are prayers wow. okay wow yeah so so I get like I get into stuff like that okay that's amazing are there any books that you hope she should not read not read no. <laughs> 
No? No. Twilight? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. No. You know, no. listen, I am like, we had, I had a Mills and Boone phase. Hey, it's Twilight now. They're just, you know, the vampires. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is Mills and Boone? <laughs> it's, it's exactly Twilight. Okay. <laughs> But so, without vampires. Oh, sounds better. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you clearly don't like vampire fiction. I just, I don't know. I just feel like I feel not yet. Uh, no, I not feel, yet. I feel bad for it almost because honestly, people hate on it so much. But I don't think it's a bad story. Like I think she, she said I came to her in a dream or something. It's not a bad dream. But then, like she wrote it, and I was just like, why is the protagonist so stupid in life? She is really like stupid. she's so stupid. She's and so the insipid. lines. There was this one line that I think there's a there's a um, Tumblr post going around about this too. That there was a line that was like, um, Aro laughed, ha ha ha, he giggled. That's a line that a, <laughs> that a writer oh, wrote and an editor approved and a publisher published. That's a line. <laughs> so like, I feel like it could have been good if like so someone had made an effort. Yes. <laughs> Since you want to study writing and uh, language seems to be important to you, do you have like a pet peeve with fiction generally when you pick up books to read and there are typos in it? When I was younger, I would like find the typos in books. Just like I was like, I'm the most annoying six-year-old on the planet. Just like he made a mistake. He was wrong, and I know that. So yeah, it was just a very, very irritating child. And then another peeve of mine with books is I feel like there's a fine line between like making something like cliched and yet fun, and just relying so much on cliches that you know what's gonna happen and it's like stupid. Yeah. That's like true. every YA writer, and I feel like this is a fun game you can play, and you can always everybody can always win. Guess who she's gonna like based on how they describe them. Because ah, if it's like if it's like perfect. muddy hair, then you can you can it's not. But if it's like runs a hand through silky yet muddy hair, then you're like, all right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great technique. She's <laughs> nailed it. She's totally nailed it. So Do you I, guys have a movie in you to yeah. write? Actually, you know what I've I've wanted I've been yeah. wanting to ask you this question for a while. Yeah. That you uh, you've been a movie critic for so long and you understand the the whole the craft and the art of filmmaking so well. How come you haven't like are you pla- are you ever going to write a yeah. movie script? Yeah. No. Oh, never, why is that? Never. Uh, you know, a I don't have the talent. Like you, it's a different. Talent, and mm-hmm. I don't believe for one minute that I have it. Uh, and B, honestly, I just don't have the courage, um, you know, to, you know, and, and I, I have seen this so closely with with my husband. Mm-hmm. It's um, the highs are so high, mm-hmm. you know. You do a three edits, you do a PK. I mean, it's just insane, like yeah. the, the way your life moves for the next three months. And the lows are so low. Mm-hmm. Um, literally in three hours, uh, people have said. This is rubbish. Uh, uh, it's not going to work. On that Friday evening, distributors are slightly ashen-faced uh, because no one's gone in. Yeah. And then you need to have the courage to the next morning say, "What am I doing next?" Um, and that takes a spine of steel, mm. you know. And you have to. You. It has to be about the process. It has to be about how much you love cinema. You can't attach yourself to the reception and the box office and what critics mm-hmm. say and. All of that, and I'm not sure that I would ever have the courage to do that. Okay, wow, that's a great answer. Yeah, I'm rethinking my whole life right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, people who love it, uh, um, like him, like Vinod. Um, you know, I remember when he made Broken Horses, which literally didn't run for two and a half days. Um, he, I, he's the only person I know who's so zen-like about it. He was like, "Hmm, acha, koi nahi." Was he editing? <laughs> yeah, he wow, just okay. it just you just move to the next because the journey and that process is so much fun and you love mm. it and you love the struggle of it. It's that mm. you know because uh, there's no way to control what's going to happen. True, that's you true. You know, so it's very tough. It's a very brutal profession, yeah. and and I honestly don't have the stomach for it. We need somebody to tell us how good or bad it is. Clearly, <laughs> that is also important. <laughs> What about you, Zuni? Do you have? Such ambitions? Maybe. I mean, that's kind of why I want to go to university. I okay. really want to figure it out. I yeah. mean, I like my subjects right now. My higher levels are theater, English literature, and French, and those are like the most radical subjects um, here that I yeah, could possibly have taken. Not so you know, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So and theatrical and, engineering, <laughs> design. 
So, so yeah, so I, that's why I kind of want to try, I don't know, you know, just try several things, like maybe filmmaking or maybe journalism, I don't know, you know, I just want to, I want to be able to take a class in these things and explore these things in a way oh, that I'm so jealous. Yeah, me too. That was right? the first thing. I want to be 17 we were, again and yeah. do this all over again. Yeah. yeah, we were visiting the campus of Columbia, which was not the place that I would love to apply and we turned oh, a corner and there was this giant library and dad was like, I, it's not fair. <laughs> like, it's just not fair. He started it's sulking. That. He was, for the rest of the trip, he was just... <laughs> he was like it's just not right that you get to go here and I don't <laughs> yeah but that's true right so like now funny. like my brother's also like really younger than me so when he was going through his college process and all I would just like imagine all the amazing things he's going to do over the yeah. next two years and when I was in college I completely wasted it all by just being angry and be like why am I doing this <laughs> but this it's is fun. all worth don't it. be it's like Sharon fun. yeah it's also go. fun to kind yeah, of oak exactly. dad about it though because he's like He's like, no, but he says the most ridiculous things. He's like, I will, wherever you go now, I will buy a house on campus. And I'm like, no, you won't. And, he's, and then there's this long pause. I'm not paying for it. <laughs> okay, we uh, uh, we have this thing that we do at the end of every episode, which is called the clickbait round. Um, it's never resulted in anything remotely clickbaity, but one has to have hope in life. Yeah. Um, what we're going to do with you guys is we're just going to ask you like fun book questions and just uh, answer with whatever comes to mind. Uh, shall I begin, Sharon? Yes, yes. Shall please. I? Please, please. Yeah. So, one famous author that you just couldn't read. It doesn't have to be Indian. It can be any nationality. What's the name of the lady who wrote it? Stephanie Meyer. Whoever oh. wrote Twilight. <laughs> Twilight. Yeah. That's my answer. <laughs> oh, God. I just couldn't get through. Okay, I'm sorry, this is just the worst, right? No, no, it's like no, the clickbait round and I'm like 30 years later. Still here, Abhi. It's all right. Grey hair. It's like that. I'm, I think AIB did this great sketch about Ashutosh Gwarakar movies and by the time they left, the audience leaves. They're like, Kudzai and one has turned into a skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> and the other guy says, Kudzai is lovely. That's my pause right now. Um, I, an author I couldn't read. I, honestly, I don't know because I don't read enough to sort of not read. You know what I mean? Mm. Does Can that I make answer? sense? I'll answer. Haan, bolo na. Haruki Murakami. She's a Murakami I'm, hater. I have no words for this. So I'm not even going to. Yeah, I've never tried. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, no, please like, do. Can, I mean, this can result in blood bucks. Though. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> like one person, because if I was doing this with, if I was interviewing somebody and they were like, I've just never been able to read me the game and I'd be like, oh. <laughs> That's oh, you have no idea what I go through. I love Murakami and Rashti and she hates both of them. <laughs> so we've had fights yes. with guests and they're like, can we please move on? <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. Yeah, well, Sorry. I had arguments with my friends about whether um, Hermione should have ended up with Ron or Harry till I was like 13. We argued about this. Uh, we like, I still have a... What, do you, what did you think? I was conflicted because in the movies I thought Harry, but in the books I thought Ron. Because in the movies they just made Ron this comical like sidekick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in That's the books true. he was so much more than that. But my friend was like, Ron is, Rupert Grint is amazing and I can't believe you would ever say that. I'm like, well, I said that. What do you want to do about it? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, the next question is, a book that basically defines your childhood. That's tough. That is tough. Um, Coraline. Oh. oh. Yeah. What? <laughs> what do you do to her? <laughs> huh? You're making me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it defines literally, that is, that's not no, literally. No, 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 no. Obviously, no. Which was, one? Yeah. was something that you held uh, dear to you. Yeah, dear to you. When you Definitely, yeah. Go on. Go but, on. Oh, mm, that's really, I don't know what to say. About, like life. Well, she's still in her childhood, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she is. Right now. She is. For me, it would be the Mallory Towers. Yeah, oh, same. You know yeah. what? Same. Man, I yeah? just the Mallory Towers and also um, Harry Potter because everybody wanted to be Hermione, but I wanted to be Luna. Mm. Oh, <laughs> mm, that's a good one. Because you like fun glasses. Yes, that's that's the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a book that you'd love to see as a TV show. As a TV show, yeah. not as a film. Or as a film. Or as oh. Sacred Games, <laughs> which is there. Yeah, that's it's already done. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to like encourage people um, <laughs> to watch it. Failed. Okay. What a loyal niece. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Yeah. No, I was so I was so once. happy at that Pomona presentation. I was like, that's my work. <laughs> um, you know, I I I wonder who could translate the vegetarian to film. Mm. Who, you know, who do you think would be able it's to It's a tough one. You know, there's a, there's the guy who did Call Me By Your Name, Luca Guadagnino. Yes. I think he would uh, be able to take those visuals and put maybe, them yeah. 
you know, put them on a screen. I'm going to say this one book that I really liked when I was like 13 or 14, um, The School for Good and Evil. And I would love to see that as a TV show also because I was like the first person that picked it up. So mm-hmm. I'm, I emailed the author never thinking he would reply. And he replied and like 13 year old me was like dying. And he gave me the sequel himself because wow. I was the first fan that I ever mailed him. And now he's a New York Times bestselling author and I'm like very proud of it. So that's so main Chenani. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. I've realized that authors are very accessible. They yeah. are like actually. If you yeah. find an email, I, when I was a grad student, I had to. Uh, we had to work on a magazine as our final project. So naturally, I chose a magazine about books. It was called Lit before Lit became a thing. Oh, nice! And, yeah, and I used to love this author named Christopher Moore. I don't know if you guys have heard of yeah. him. So he's written. A, he's very funny. And I was writing, a, he wrote a retelling of uh, King Lear nice. from the fool's perspective. Nice. Wow. So I was doing an article in that about uh, sequels or, tra- uh, or interpretations not written by the original author. And I just took a chance and I emailed him. And he replied with detailed quotes and was like oh, happy lovely. to help and answer the follow-up questions. I've just realized that they are... These they are, are authors, really, yeah. yeah. Like they yeah, but are. That's so generous. I yeah. mean, that's lovely, isn't that? Yeah. And like this yeah, man has published like ten bestsellers, and he's so happy to just like yeah. answer grad students' questions. Yeah, that's like, true. They are more Why are you so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> See, Anna, yeah, it's because. You know. <laughs> Next question. Um, an author you'd love to sit down and have dinner with? Neil Gaiman. <laughs> too easy. <laughs> yeah, way too easy. Wait, yeah. can they be dead? Yes, yes, yes. Hemingway, Hemingway. Hemingway? Yeah. No. What? Don't allow her to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Bad influence. He's dead. No one's sitting with anyone. That's true. <laughs> I need like a Ouija board to have dinner with him now. Would no, like... don't do that at all. <laughs> <laughs> dinner is still alright. What is this? <laughs> Just like, would you like spaghetti? No, no. no right. <laughs> I think Next J.K. Thing Rowling, no? Yeah, obviously. That's not I mean, like, like, come on. Yeah. Hen- also in the coffee shop that she wrote it exactly. in. I think that would story. be like amazing. Yeah. What a story. And when she, at the, at the end story. of the premiere of the last movie, when she's like, whether you return by book or the big screen, Hogwarts will always be there to welcome you home. Oh, oh my God. God. I, know. I know. When we saw the last film, me and Zuni, so we saw it, all four of us. And uh, I went in a cloak with a, with a wand. <laughs> you did? Yeah. So and, and then, you know, when the credits rolled, me and Zuni just stood up and we were weeping, yeah, both of us. So and we know that my son, Agni, who's a cricket player and has no interest in books and will never be on this show was like <laughs> you know he was just like really like yeah we were I mean, so, I'm so upset and somehow I got mothers. so I got so mothers, mothers, mothers. I swear yeah. I got so defensive about it like this this mother with her kid who was very sweet but as we were leaving she was like someone's a fan and I looked at her like you have no idea like I am you don't know what the fan means like this is my religion like <laughs> Yeah, so her definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm so excited about Fantastic Beasts. Like when we saw the first movie in the opening. Yeah. Like, yeah, so yeah. all of us. This is have the you, same as like Childhood Reborn. Have you done the Harry Potter ride at Universal Studios? Yes! yes! It's awesome! Yes! Yes! Ollivander, we went into the wand shop and Ollivander picked me to give a special custom wand. Oh. And I was so tiny then that now I can't hold it anymore because my hand is too big for it, but I still have it. And oh my gosh. Oh, it was, just, but you know, we went there literally two weeks after it opened. Okay, okay. okay. And I was also there as a journalist to write about it for Hindustan Times. So they were so being like... So we got like, to cut all the lines? Yeah, so we, wow. got, we got them. They were taking care, special <laughs> care of us. We got to cut the lines and then, this is so funny, so we do that ride and it is just fantastic. And then, as we get off, the PR lady is like, do you guys want to go again? And we're like, yes! yes! Oh, wow! And everybody, not even the kids, even the adults, I'm like, yeah! And I was so prepared for when we went into Ollivander's one shop because yeah. I knew he only picked one kid and I was like that kid's gonna be me <laughs> I was like I was so acting good. as though I got a golden ticket no I perfected I perfected my innocent and just young enough to be cute expression in the middle of the <laughs> This is amazing. I, 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 and, they, and there was this Indian mom in the crowd, like pushing her terrified child, like, go, go. And he just wouldn't just go, and the kid wouldn't go. And I was just like, <laughs> and I was small enough too. That was the thing. And then he called me, and I was like, me? You don't say. 
that was the best moment. I love it. I, I came out of that ride. Just and the like, butter beer is so crying. good, man. Oh my gosh, the butter beer is so yeah, good. Yeah, so good. They've created a hogs meat yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. Like, there are like yeah. Madame Malkin's like robes. It's, and wow. It's, it's I mean, awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and you know, for me, the fact that this world now exists and it came out of her brain. Yes. I, that's yeah. That's it's crazy. Just, it's nuts. That's it's nuts. nuts. It's and the detailing that she's thought it through. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's intense. I was just like, we've all imagined sitting on rooms and flying behind yes. like Harry Ron. Yes. Yes. And, and we didn't explode out of it. Yeah. 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 It was so Sorry, awesome. Sharon, but we'll go there somewhere. Yeah. Someday. We'll try to you. recreate it, remember. <laughs> So we won't be able to. <laughs> no. Incred Incred also doesn't have that much yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> it was great though. Okay. And it's like your whole childhood's like born here. Like when we went to see Star Wars. Yeah. The minute that the opening came, mom was just like. <laughs> <laughs> she, just she was like sobbing, and I was I was like I'm too young, so I never I was like mom, are you okay? You're a big Star Wars fan. You know I. It's one of my core movie memories. Oh, really? Because I was, I think, 10, 12 when it released. Hmm. So huh. I, that when those letters started moving up, I <coughs> like something in me just knew the world has changed. You know, and and then to see them again, I was just like, oh my god, this is like it was too much. You I get like very moms, see movies. Like moms crying. Somebody do something. <laughs> no, but movies speak to me <coughs> in a way that books don't. Hmm. So my uh, emotion and my hmm. my drama is all for, for those the, for movies. Those. Okay, that was amazing, guys. Yeah. I don't think we've had a conversation that was this much fun. It was so much like, fun. Thank so you so much. Thank you. Yes. Loved having you both. Zuni, you are so cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I was not as smart as you when I was 17. I was really dumb. <laughs> I don't so believe that. that. Yeah. We were very dumb kids. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> but like well like, done on yeah. your book. Thank we look you. For, I really look forward to buying it and reading it. Reading it, it for sure. Support. And good luck for university. I thank really you. hope you get what you want. And yes, yes. Have the best time of your life. No, thank you. Yes, let <laughs> yeah. us know where you get in and yeah. uh, what you decide to do. Yeah, we yeah. have no chat. Trust me, if I get into where I want to go, you will hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running down the street saying, guess where mm. I got in? So, yes, you, you will know. Awesome. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. And thank you both of you for thank giving you. us your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody for watching. Please uh, comment. Please share this episode if you like it and also subscribe to Books on Toast. Correct. We are everywhere on all social media as Books on Toast except for Twitter where we are Books on Tea. Yeah. So some kind of toast. Yeah. If you're that person sitting on Books on Toast, please give, please it, give back. it back. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.